This is a lesson six, exercise 5G, communications and connections. The learning goal is to look at the connections between matrices and social connections, the interpretation of matrices and social connections, to look at what a matrix squared will entail in regards to information. The success criteria is to be able to make a matrix based on a graph that shows connections and to interpret a two-step matrix on a connection graph. Now apologies for the sounds that you can hear in the background. Um, I invited my wife to watch me make a video <laughs> and she thinks I am very stupid. She's drinking or slurping tea, she's eating, I'll get a picture up of what she's eating, Moneta Luxury Cream Wafers. As a very <laughs> ASMR like, and she just thinks uh, I am the biggest <laughs> stupid idiot right now. <laughs> and I can choose to edit this out, but I want to show you the reality of what it's like to make videos in the Herman household. Mind you, Monty is asleep, so I don't have to deal with the dog jumping all over me and my wife oh, laughing. Entry. It is a long entry because you made it a long entry. Oh lordy lordy lordy. So I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to see how long I can do this without having to crack up laughing and see <laughs> how much of a spaz my wife can be. Alright. <laughs> there it is. There it is. She's been holding that in and she's just been wanting to say that. <sighs> okay, done. Okay, done. no, done. she's not done. <laughs> she, she, she's... She, She's just getting started as far as I'm aware. Social networks, communication pathways, and connections can be represented and analyzed using matrix techniques. Communication matrices are always square. You will never deal with an M by N. It's always an M by M or an N by N. Uh, the numbers will always be the same, so it's going to be a square matrix. The matrix methods of investigating communications can be applied to friendships, travel between towns, and other types of two-way connections. So we're going to look at this example here where we can see four different people, Vicky, Stephen, Kathy, and Paul. And this diagram, um, you can see each person is uh, in each corner. And the diagram shows the communications within a group of friends. Um, the double-headed arrow connecting two names, that just indicates that those two people communicate with each other. Um, and if there uh, is no arrow directly connecting two people, they do not communicate. Now that does not mean that they don't communicate via another person. They can, they just don't directly. And there's a key word there, directly connect with each other. That should be crossed out, that should be underlined. Let's get rid of that. Yep. Sorry, this is getting a bit delayed. Underline directly. So you can just consider this maybe a work circumstance of some sort, uh, where there's four people within a team and maybe there's some, some type of leadership roles of some sort. Um, but you can see that the, the most popular people are Kathy because they talk to each person and Stephen because they talk to each person. They communicate with the three people that are there. Vicky and Paul aren't so popular because they only talk to two people but not um, with each other. Uh, so Vicky and Paul don't necessarily talk directly to each other. So what we're going to do is these links are called one step connections because it takes one step to get from one person to the other. Um, Record the social links in a matrix capital N using the first letter of each name to label the columns and rows and explain how the matrix should be read. So capital N is going to equal to, and we're going to have the four people. Uh, let's say in this case, in this case we're going to have Vicky, Stephen, Kathy, and Paul. And that will also be written on the top as well. And this will be a four by four matrix, because there are four people. Um, now this on the left is coming from and going to. So it's going from here to here. Now Vicky doesn't necessarily talk to himself, or herself rather. Um, and obviously there's no direct loop that connects Vicky to herself. Generally you don't do that within um, communication diagrams. So Vicky to Vicky, or from Vicky to Fic Vicky is zero. And again, this is going to be for Steven to Steven, Kathy to Kathy, and Paul to Paul. So generally speaking, you will have a diagonal that goes from left to right um, of zeros. 
and this is what's called the leading diagonal. Now, from Vicky to Steven, in this case, there's one way that Vicky will talk to Steven. There's one way that Vicky will talk to Kathy. But there's no direct link from Vicky to Paul. There's no arrow there, so this will be dictated by zero. From Steven to Vicky, again, there'll be one. Because remember, there are two arrows. It's a two-way arrow. Um, so even though Vicky talks to Stephen, we also know that Stephen talks to Vicky. So there will also be a one for him. We know that Stephen's even is zero. From Stephen to Kathy, there's one. And from Stephen to Paul, there'll be one. And you can see the trend. You can see what's going on here. Um, all we're doing is this, if they talk to each other, there's one. And if they don't, directly, that is, there's a zero. Uh, one, Kathy to Paul, one. And Paul to Vicky, zero. Paul to Stephen, one. Paul to Kathy, one. And then Paul to Paul, zero. And that's it. That's all there is to it, to creating a matrix based on this communication diagram. But then it says how, or explain how the matrix should be read. Now the explanation is just really based on what the number zeros and ones represent. So I wrote, reading the row to a column, because remember we're getting the row, all of these four rows, to one of these four columns, indicates that there is a direct, and I'm underlying direct communication with the number one. And if the number zero, zero is used when there is no communication. Got lazy, but I should write communication. Okay, explain why there is a symmetry about the leading diagonal of the matrix. So remember, the leading diagonal is just this diagonal here. And what it means by symmetry is that we can see that there is this pattern that uh, looks like this of ones with a zero there. This will be mirror imaged of the leading diagonal. And the reason why is because communication communication is two way it's a two way communication so um, Stephen talking to Vicky will be the same as Vicky talking to Stephen so we're expecting the symmetry here now this is based on the assumption that when you order the people Vicky Stephen Kathy and Paul it will be the same on the top as well but all you need to write in this case is communication is two-way. What information is given by the sum of a column or row? So if we look at any column, let's take uh, Kathy for this case. If we were to get this column and add all of these up, this would just indicate how many communications go to Kathy. And we expect three, one, two, three, when we add it up, because we can see that there are three arrows going directly to Kathy. So what information is given by the sum of our column? Uh, the sum uh, tells us, the sum tells us that, uh, tells us, not that, but tells us that, um, I'm gonna actually take the word that away. Uh, the sum tells us how many direct communications there are. Direct communications. For that particular person. Um, and because um, because the, the, the communication is two-way, if we get the Kathy row, we should essentially get the same answer when we add them up, three. Because from Kathy, we can see one, two, three. But to Kathy, we can also see one, two, three, as these arrows are two-way. Um, D says that N squared gives us the number of two-step communications between people, namely, how many ways one person can communicate with someone via another person. We're gonna find the matrix N squared, then um, the square of matrix uh, of N is just N times N. Now we can do this the easy way or the hard way. I'm gonna get my class calculator and do this the easy way. 
So remember to put a certain matrix in, you go to math two. Now, because we're dealing with square matrix, uh, matrices, we're just gonna click this square matrix here in, in math two, click it again, click it one more time, and this will give us a four by four matrix. Now, I'm just gonna scroll up to the actual numbers themselves. I'm gonna put in the numbers accordingly. All right, going in and put my last number, making sure I hit a cross on the cursor. So that way we can get out of the matrix and the cursor will turn bigger. Press this button here to establish that we want to associate this with a letter. And for the sake of consistency, we'll put caps lock on with the letter N, execute that. And so now N has been established as that matrix. Now, all we need to put into the um, calculator is N multiplied by N. And so this will give us a completely different matrix. What this matrix looks like is 2112, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, and 2112. And you can see some familiarity and some similarity. Uh, Vicky, Stephen, Kathy, Paul. Stephen, Kathy, you can see some uh, similarity between um, the numbers that's within the leading diagonal. So when we look at this information here and we compare it to this over here, which I'll just grab down. There we go. It just saves me from scrolling back, back and forth. Um, so from Vicky to Vicky, you notice that there's not a zero anymore. There's actually a two. That just means how many ways can Vicky talk to herself via another person? So Vicky can talk to herself by going from Vicky to Kathy back to Vicky. So there's one person within that process. Or Vicky can talk to herself via Steven and back to Vicky. From Vicky to Steven via another person, there is only one way. To get from Steven via another person, the only other way she can go is through to Kathy, then to Steven. This is again the same for Kathy. There's only one way. She has to go from Steven, then to Kathy. And then with Vicky to Paul, she can go two ways. She can either go to Kathy to Paul, or she can go to Steven to Paul. So that's just the interpretation of that. Um, the three here, for Steven to Steven and for Kathy to Kathy, these are three. Just based on how popular um, both Steven and Kathy are. So for Steven to talk to himself, Steven can go to Vicky and then back. Steven can go to Kathy and then back. And then Steven can go to Paul and then back. So there are three ways. Same with Kathy, Kathy to Vicky in the back, Kathy to Steven in the back, and then Kathy to Paul and then back. So two-step communication is just via another person. Three-step communication will mean that you will go from one person and then to another person. Um, and then to another person. So there's three steps within that process. All right, for question E, uh, I've got a picture there, I'm sick of scrolling back and forth. We're gonna use the matrix N squared to find the number of two-step ways Kathy can communicate with Steven and write these connections. So from Kathy to Steven, there's either uh, from Vicky to Steven or from Kathy to Paul to Steven. So the way, how many ways are up? There are two ways. The first way is to go from Kathy to Vicky to Steven, or we can go from Kathy to Paul to Steven. Uh, question F, in the N squared matrix, there is a three where S row means the S column. This indicates that there are three two-step communications Steven can have with himself. Explain how this can be given a sensible interpretation. So the three ways there are from Steven to Vicky, back to Steven, from Steven to Kathy, back to Steven, or from Steven to Paul, back to Steven. 
explain how this can be given a sensible interpretation. Well, why would uh, Steven talk to Vicky and then Vicky will then talk to Steven? So a good way maybe we can interpret this is, say Steven were to ring one of these three people and maybe calls Vicky, and then Vicky is not available and it goes to a voice message in which Steven says, hey, yo, Vicky, call me back. Then Vicky will finally get that message and then Vicky will then call Steven again. This is probably the best way to do this type of interpretation. I know in a lot of businesses where there are teams that are communicating with each other, there's usually some type of uh, link or chain that people talk to each other. And so to find all the possibilities of talking uh, to another team and have that relayed back to yourself, that information can be handy and generally is used for optimization reasoning. Um, so an interpretation, the interpretation can be um, Stephen calls Vicky, Vicky doesn't answer, and then from there, Vicky calls back Stephen. All right, last question. If you were asked to find n to the power of three, what does this mean? Well, that just means how many three step connections there are. How many three step connections a person can have with another person. And you remember, this also includes yourself. Including yourself, including themselves rather. Mm -mm -mm. Now, for the sake of finding out what this will look like, That is what n to the power of three will look like. Uh, sorry, just stretch my stretch my arm there, so it turned a bit roughly. Um, and so all the different ways that let's take for instance from this this uh, cell here, which is a number five. That is just talking about the way that go back to the original one. The way that Stephen can talk to Vicky via another person, another two, another three people. Uh, there are five ways uh, through three people that Stephen can talk to Vicky. That's what that number means there. This concludes this video. Apologies for my wife at the start of the video. I thought I included in just for a bit of giggles, a bit of laughs, a bit of lols. Ha ha ha. See you guys in the next video. Tell you.